Welcome to our exclusive Words Matter More online segment where we dig a little deeper into the words of the week. Uh, welcome, Kel Richards. We've got something here from Matthew at Castle Hill in New South Wales. He wants to know the origins of the word treaty. Now, me with my political government hat on here says that you can only have a treaty between nation states, but new New South Wales Premier Chris Min says he's going to have a treaty with the Aboriginal people of New South Wales. So what does it mean in this sort of context? Well, basically, the dictionaries agree with you. They say you're right. Old word, been around since about 1382, and the, the noun was co constructed from the verb to treat, which meant to deal with. So it would be two nations dealing with each other, and at the end of their dealings, they come up with a document, which is a contract, and it settles things like peace or a truce or trade or whatever between those nations. That's the idea. The, the Oxford says that, for example. And every dictionary I looked at said exactly the same thing. The Collins, the Longman, they all say the same thing. And the Longman, in fact, says it, it is a deal between a, a government or a nation. So you've got to ask yourself, who mm -hmm. is the government or nation on the other side? You've got New South Wales on this side or the Commonwealth of Australia or Victoria, whoever it is, on the other side, who is the other government or nation? Uh, is, the, is the assumption that Aboriginal people are an, a separate government or nation from us. I mean, in a sense, that's the worry, and that's why it would be good not to use a word like treaty, I would think. I would also make the point, too, that uh, before, uh, you know, white settlement, or, you know, the arrivals happened in Australia, of course, it wasn't one homogenous nation state, even of a sorts. It was a whole range of uh, often warring uh, Aboriginal clan and skin groups. Uh, I think there's upwards of about 700 of them. And this is why they use the term now First Nations. It was a whole lot of uh, individual Aboriginal nations. So in the case of New South Wales, who does the New South Wales government negotiate with? Does it yes. have to sit down with all the originating language groups in New South Wales? Well, in fact, there have been complaints that the wrong land council was involved in making a decision about what would happen to this national park or that bit of land. So, so the territorial thing mm. still exists and the, the people that occupy the Sydney Basin area, the Eora people, I mean, I, I don't know how you find them to negotiate with them and that can only cover the Sydney Basin and then you've got to work through the rest of New South Wales as you say. So it's, it's a very, very messy and surely, surely, Peter, it's a divisive idea. Uh, doing an internal treaty of any sort mm. must be divisive. You're spot on. If they were using the word agreement, I think I'd still say it's not a good look. Yeah. Uh, it's yep. not the right thing in terms of unity. But it would be, I think, a better signal about where we are today in modern Australia than using the word treaty. Yep. A Stuart from Penguin in Tasmania, he's asked about the word busybody. He says... We regard a busybody as a person who interferes in the affairs that don't concern them, but how does that make their body busy? It's, it's a good question, and the word was, we know who coined it, a man by the name of William Tyndale. He was the first man to translate the New Testament from its original Greek into English, and his New Testament was published in 1526. And he had this, he had a flair like Shakespeare for coining new words. Uh, and so to describe someone who meddled in the affairs of others, he simply coined the expression busybody. I mean, he coined a lot of words. He coined seashore, nurse, viper. He just, in, like, like Shakespeare, he just invented them out of his head because he was trying to translate Greek into English and the English vocabulary wasn't adequate. Now, he just coined busybody for someone who meddles in the affairs of others. I presume the picture in his mind when Tyndale thought about this is, well, it's someone who's rushing around sticking their nose into things. But it came out of, mm -hmm. I think, his brilliant verbal imagination. Wow. Wow. Um, education standards, we hear a lot about the, the falling of uh, standards in this country. We certainly know we're dropping off league tables uh, internationally. We hear this term, we've got to get back to basics. My viewers want to know where the expression comes from. Actually, this was coined by journalists. Every so often, journalists do actually coin original expressions. Quite famously, Time magazine coined the word beatnik, put together the beat generation and the Sputnik spacecraft and, and coined the word beatnik. Now, it happens from time to time. Journalists don't just churn out hack work, but actually invent new expressions. And uh, the expression back to basics was coined by the New York Times in 1975 to, to capture the 
idea of getting back to what was most, what was simplest or mm. most important. Uh, and originally, it only applied about 20 odd years. Uh, it applied just to education. But in more recent times, it's broadened and it can be applied to anything. So uh, John Major, after he'd ceased to be Prime Minister, talked about getting back to basics means getting back to taking responsibility, looking after your own family, not expecting the government to do everything for you. But it started as a nice journalistic phrase. And well done to the New York Times for coming up with it. Now, here's one, we'll finish here, but here's one I have never heard of before. A Chris from Coral Bank in Victoria asks if you can tell him the origin of the term bang to rights. Bang to rights instead of never heard of it. Kel, what's yep. it mean? Uh, well, it's a police or criminal expression, first recorded in 1903, and it's bang means right on, spot on, and rights means rightfully. So a policeman might say to a, to, to a, a thief that he's grabbed red-handed, I've caught you banged to rights, or, you know, the, the, the thief might put his hand up and say, oh, Governor, you got me banged to rights. So that's what it means, and it comes from that sort of background. Uh, and it's only our expression. Uh, us in Britain use the expression bang to rights. Americans never say it. Americans always say dead to rights. Uh, don't know what why, but they do. Bang makes more sense yeah. to me because it suggests hitting the target right on the, the middle of the target, which is what bang suggests. So bang to rights, criminals, police, that's where it comes from. And you do a daily email where can people sign up? Uh, if they go to OzWords, uh, ozwords.com.au, there's a page that says, uh, on the front page actually, if you just scroll down, put in your email address, you'll receive an e a letter every day falling into your inbox with a, the word of the day and an explanation of the word of the day. And of course you can tell Kelly, you can tell me via my Instagram, Peter Credlet AO. These are the words, that, phrases, whatever you want us to look into. And this wonderful man will go to work and bring them to you here on Sky News and via this web broadcast. Kel Richards, thank you as always. See you next week. A delight.